Hey everyone, welcome to Lunch Bunch. Today I'm going to read a ghost story, and it is from this collection called The Ghosts Who Danced. And I'm going to read the story from the title. So this is The Ghosts Who Danced, which is from Ireland. Once there was a boy called Patrick who loved playing football. One evening, he was taking a shortcut through a graveyard, and what did he see? An old skull lying in the grass for all the world, like a football. Before he knew it, he'd raised his right foot and sent it flying. Thwack! The skull hit a gravestone and was smashed to bits. All at once, a bony hand shot out of a nearby grave and grabbed Patrick by the ankle. Kick a poor fellow when he's down, why don't you? hissed a voice in his ear, and the hand started dragging him deeper into the grave. As luck would have it, old father Robert happened to be crossing the graveyard, he sprinkled Patrick's leg with holy water and the skeleton let go, but that wasn't the end of the story. Every time Patrick tried to kick a ball, an invisible hand grabbed him by the ankles and held him fast. A ghostly voice would whisper in his ear, I will thwart you so, son, each time you try to kick something. And he did. Patrick's dream of becoming a footballer lay in tatters. To cheer him up, his mother bought him a fiddle, and Patrick turned out to be as good as fiddling as he had been at football. Very soon, he was in demand all over the county to play his fiddle at parties and weddings and funerals. Now, one night, Halloween night it was, Patrick was returning home late from a christening. It was raining and he was soaked to the skin. I'll rest a while, said Patrick to himself, and he sat under a big tree in a graveyard. Just then, it struck midnight. The graves all around him yawned open and the ghosts of the dead climbed out. Be you the fiddler we hired? asked one of them, glaring at Patrick with eyes as dark as the soot in the devil's chimney. He must have been held up, replied Patrick. There's no one here but me, and I happen to be sheltering from the rain. I see you have a fiddle, said the dead man. Are you any good? And he rattled a thick gold chain around his neck. He'd been the town mayor before he died. As good as the rest of them, said Patrick humbly. Will you play for us then? asked the ghost of the mayor. It's Halloween, and we must dance. If you're good, we'll make it worth your while. Yes, play for us, roared the other ghosts, and they crowded round Patrick, chilling him to the bone. Patrick put the bow to his fiddle and started playing right there in the rain. The ghosts danced merrily, leaping and twisting around the graves. The ones who had arms clapped in time to the music, and the ones who had heads on their necks whooped with joy. Here's an illustration of all the ghosts dancing. When a rooster crowed in a nearby field, the ghost shuffled to a stop. The one night of freedom a year was over. They jostled around Patrick. You're good, they whispered. Very good indeed. The best Halloween we've ever had. One of them reached into his pocket and tossed a handful of gold coins into Patrick's cap. The others did the same. And soon, Patrick's cap was full to the brim with coins and jewelry. The ghost of the mayor grinned, showing rotting teeth in his skull. We promised you a rich reward. And he put his thick gold chain around Patrick's neck. Don't forget to come back next year. Then laughing, he leapt back into his grave. The other ghosts retreated into theirs, and the earth closed above their heads. Patrick ran all the way home to share the good news with his mother. But you mustn't tell anyone how I came to, into so much wealth, Ma, he said. I promise the ghost I will return next Halloween, and there'll be more treasure waiting for me, to be sure. Ma promised, but it's not easy to keep a secret in a small village. Before long, everyone was talking about Patrick's new clothes and Patrick's new horse. The poor woman could hardly leave the house without someone wanting to know how her son had obtained so much money so quickly. One boy in particular kept pestering her day in and day out. His name was Frank, and he was an apprentice to the village baker. Rumor had it that Frank was a liar and a cheat and then he put chalk dust in his cakes, out of sheer spite for his customers. But Patrick's ma didn't see a cheat standing in front of her whenever he talked to her. She saw a little boy, very much like her own son, whose mother was always ill and unable to work. I know your mother is poorly, she said, and that you have no money for medicine. We need money for heating too, and we owe the butcher for a month. My poor ma can only take beef broth. If only I had the good luck your Patrick had, I would be able to buy it for her every day. 
Do you know that old graveyard on the hill? Said Patrick's ma, whispering so no one would hear. Patrick went there on Halloween with his fiddle and played for the ghosts. They rewarded him with gold and jewelry. So that's his secret, is it? Said Frank. Thank you, kindly. I'll not let anyone know what you told me. It was nearly Halloween again, and Frank was determined to get his hands on the ghost treasures himself. He bought a cheap fiddle, the cheapest he could find, and a big cap, the largest they had in the shop. On Halloween night, he approached Patrick, who was eating alone at the local tavern. Going anywhere special tonight, he asked. I'm playing at a Halloween party, replied Patrick, out of town. I have a journey to make tonight, too, said Frank, and it's cold enough out there to freeze the strings off a fiddle. Let's have a drink to warm us up before we leave. My treat. He fetched wine from the bar, and, when Patrick wasn't looking, slipped a sleeping potion into his glass. His ruse worked, and at midnight, the ghost discovered Frank, and not Patrick, under the tree in the graveyard. Is last year's fiddler not coming? roared the ghost of the mayor. I'm afraid he's unavailable, replied Frank. He sent me in his place. But are you any good? asked the mayor. If you're good, we'll make it worth your while, laughed the other ghosts. I am the best there is, said Frank. In truth, he hadn't even bothered to tune the fiddle. He tucked it under his chin and started playing. A sound like the howling of a cat in great pain echoed around the graveyard. The ghost stopped in mid-step, their eyes wide with shock. You said you were good, said the ghost of the mayor. The best, added the others. Put that instrument away, hissed the mayor. You must be the worst fiddle player in the world. Oh no, cried the other ghosts. This is the one night in the year when we're allowed to come out of our graves. Let him play on, terrible as he is. Frank played, and the ghosts stumbled around the graves, wincing at the awful sound of the cheap fiddle. The ones who had hands danced with them over their ears. When the rooster crowed, the ghost crowded around Frank and filled his large cap with gold. Thank you, called Frank, as they all climbed back into the graves and the earth closed over them. He ran all the way home, leaving the cheap fiddle under the tree. Look, Ma, he said, we're rich. But when he looked in his cap, the gold had turned to rotten teeth. As for Patrick, he returned to the graveyard the following Halloween and earned more gold. And I guess he's still playing for his friends there, for he died a long time ago and was buried with his fiddle in the churchyard on the hill. The end. Thanks for listening. See you next time.